Hey there, fellow fans, and welcome back to my Witchery tutorial series, Witchery Explained. This is episode two, my mutations episode, part one. Last episode, we covered the fume funnels and the witch's oven and how to gather fumes. Also, how to gather wood ash. We got a few fumes here, but there's a whole bunch more. To get that, we're going to need to mutate. To start with mutation, you're going to need a cauldron. We went and got our own cauldron from a village, actually, but you can craft a cauldron using the classic vanilla recipe. Once you have a cauldron, you're going to need the four main seeds, belladonna, snowbell, mandrake, and water artichoke. How to get these, we'll cover in a later episode. Just go ahead and put them in a crafting grid in any order, and they'll go ahead and make anointing paste. Now, you're going to want to have fire under the cauldron, so we've got some netherrack prepared right here. Let's go ahead and light that. And then just go ahead and place the cauldron. And then anoint it with the anointing paste. That makes a cauldron. Well, a witch's cauldron, rather. We already had a cauldron. We're going to want to go ahead and fill this cauldron with water. You've got two ways to do that. One is with a bucket. Ah, but uh, we're going to see how much of an annoyance that is. Sure, you can go ahead and make an infinite water supply right next to your cauldron. But I never really like those myself. They look out of place and if I want water I can just go ahead and get that elsewhere but this is going to take three buckets of water to fill that's a lot So instead of using buckets of water, why don't we go ahead and pipe some water in? The witch's cauldron is compatible with most ways to input water. Right here we have a pump. But for now, why don't we go ahead and make some mutandus since we seem to be going off topic here. To make mutandus, you need to put mandrake root, exhale of the horned one, and an egg in a cauldron, and it gives you six. We have some mutandus prepared already, but let's go ahead and craft some here. Uh, four seems to be enough. We don't want to take too much time, especially since we have some prepared. Let's get the mandrake root here. And I've got a barrel of eggs over here. For those who don't know, I'm actually using the FTB Infinity Pack for these videos. That's what all these other modded items are. So you just go ahead and throw in the items one at a time. It changes color. Pretty neat effect in my opinion. And then it's going to have a nice, cool little particle effect. And spit out the mutandus. But as you can see, it used up all three buckets of the water. So let's go ahead and pipe some water in. It has to be piped in from the top. I tried piping it in from the side. Doesn't seem to work. I don't know why, but... Piping it in from the top is the other way to do it. It doesn't look as cool, but you don't have to go and get more water from an uh, infinite water source or just from a nearby river like I was getting. <clears throat> Once it's boiling, it'll go in. I wouldn't try throwing it in too early. Even though the top is covered, it still goes in. 
a little more difficult to get it to go in, but it does remove the need to refill it with water. So that's, uh, that's pretty good in my opinion. That is pretty good. Wait for it to boil again. There we go. And... There we have some more Mutandus. Now while we wait for this to fill back up, why don't we go ahead and try out the Mutandus. The Mutandus is used to mutate plants like grass or flowers or what have you. You can mutate them into mushrooms or you can mutate them into ember moss. There we go. This is one of the things we were actually trying to get. Ember moss can only be acquired in this manner. Only pick up ember moss with shears. It'll just break if you pick it up without shears. Let's see here. Oh, we got some Spanish moss. Now, this is important. Things like ember moss, less important. But Spanish moss are pretty important to get. You use shears to pick them up, and then you put them on a wall to grow downwards like vines. They do work better on leaf blocks or logs, but let's go ahead and just leave it on this wall here. Oh, the water's filled up, so let's go ahead and finish our brew. Something else to note is that sometimes using Mutandus, you can get mycelium when used on a grass block. Oh, we got a spruce sapling here and a rowan sapling. Oh, now that's good. Rowan saplings are one of the three witchery trees that are required and only acquirable in this method. What you want to do is mutate to get a rowan sapling, let it grow, chop it down, collect the saplings, let it grow and chop it down some more. Oh, here we are, we have an alder sapling. That's a second sapling that can only be acquired through Mutandus. And here we go, the Hawthorn sapling. This is the last witchery tree sapling we need. What I'm going to want to do is let these things grow and then chop them down, as I said. Oh, we've got another alder sapling, some more Spanish moss. Oh, oh, something to note about the ember moss is you can catch fire if you walk into it. A uh, good way to grow more ember moss, actually, is to just let it spread. It spreads naturally. You can get a lot of vanilla things like oak saplings, lily pads, stuff like that. And we are out of Mutandus. Uh, well, we can make more, but I have done this before. <laughs> and I got some of uh, the other thing I was trying to get. I went and put it over here to watch it spread. But this is glint wheat. It's like ember moss in that it spreads when you place it. But it, has to, it only spreads on dirt or grass, actually. But... It lights up an area. Something cool is that you can go take it to a dark area and just place one down and it'll grow if it has grass or dirt. I'm going to place one 
glintweed here. And eventually, after some moving later, I got this many glintweed. All of this from one. And it just lit up the entire room. It's a pretty great light source. Oop. Desire Mandrake, please get out of the way. They really do not want me to go. Let's see if I can just get back. There we go. <laughs> okay. Now that we have covered Mutandis and all the saplings and various other plants you can get from Mutandis. Let's take a look at other things Mutandis can be used for to mutate. The first thing listed here is actually something called an apple, but as you can see from the recipe, it is not an apple. It actually has a brew of sleeping in it, as well as a wormy apple and some reeks of misfortune. This has the unfortunate side effect of pretty much guaranteeing whoever eats this apple gets sent to a nightmare dream world. We'll go ahead and talk about nightmares and dream worlds in a future episode. You can also mutate graveyard dust. We'll talk about that later as well. Also something pretty tasty is raw pork chop. Note the question mark there. You can make it from rotten human flesh. So it might be better to call this long pork, if you catch my meaning. You can also mutate the long pork raw pork chop into regular pork and all the meats into other meats, just in case you want a wide variety of meats. Now there's also a special mutation recipe for nether wart. This is likely because you need nether wart to make mutandus extremis. Mutandus extremis is a higher tier version of our first part of mutation magic rather and needs mutandus with nether wart in order to be made. It also needs a little bit of altar power but it doesn't list that here. Because we don't have an altar set up yet, we'll cover that in a later episode, I had my friend make me some Mutandus Extremis. Before we go ahead and use that, we can note that Mutandus Extremis also makes Treefid Seeds. We'll cover that in a later episode as well. As well as the normal Meat Mutation Magics. You can also make Endstone. With stone, and stone, mutanus extremis, mandrake root, and a mutating sprig, which is going to be the topic of our next episode on mutation magic. And a drop of luck. This is one of the fumes that you need that cannot be gathered by regular burning, but has to be gathered with crafting. Rather, crafting in a cauldron, but still. And that's all that can be crafted with it, but let's go ahead and use the Mutandus Extremis. You can use it like regular Mutandus, mutating grass, plants, various things like that. But also, you can mutate multi-tiered plants. Oh, well, we're gonna lose this. Come on, nope. I think I lost it. Oh, I think I lost it. If you mutate it at the bottom though, that's not gonna work right. But you can do fun things like having water artichoke seeds grow on top of these reeds. Something to note is that all witchery plants will grow with Mutandus extremis. So things like crops, as you just saw, are able to be grown. Something to note when chopping down these witchery trees is that sometimes chopping down these trees can upset nature spirits called Ents. These Ents are massive tree beings who will pretty much wreck your day. 
it's easy to spot an ent being summoned because when that happens, the second log up from the bottom will have a little bell sound. It's more of a chime, really. Hmm, I guess it's more of a chime. And when you hear that, look around and find the end. Because if it sneaks up on you, you will not have a good day. You will not have a good day. Not having a good day fighting this end. It's a good idea when fighting an end to trap them behind something so that they can't hit you, but you can hit them. Ents are good for end twigs, but we will cover that in a later episode. Wow, that's been fun. Oh boy, well thanks for watching, fellow fans. Next episode, we're going to be covering how to gather silver from gold ore, and in another episode, we will cover the various witchery crops. Thanks for watching, fellow fans. Leave a like and subscribe if you like my show, and leave some comments below. Bye!